Thousands watched the rescue of six people from floodwaters near Winfield, Louisiana. Now, hear the story from the Louisiana National Guardsmen who responded to the dangerous situation. We briefed the flight, briefed the crews. You know, it's going to be a live hoist mission, possible swift water, and here's the grid. The uh, obstacles on the ground during the hover, it was some real precision hover work. The, uh, the power line in the way, the trees, and doing step downs to try to get the, uh, the medic close to the patients we can. They had to trust me to not do something manipulating the flight controls that would put them in a bind, get them in trouble, get them into the obstacles, or, you know, injure them in any way. And once we located the first two agents who had, who had their boat had sunk, got our Adams on the, on the jungle penetrator, and I lowered him down. The weather was kind of a factor yesterday. There was probably only 10 feet between the power lines and the edge of the trees. Once I got down and was on the boat, we are actually standing on the side of a boat trying to hook this guy up with no slack in the cable, so I don't have any, any movement at all away from the aircraft. So every time the sucker moved, I would move. Thankfully, uh, Mr. Mooka and Mr. Sayer on the controls, they were able to keep us pretty steady. The guys on the ground were, you know, attached to the tree, so to keep from going down in the current. And at the same time, the power lines were there. And I remember the crew distinctly talking on the radio back to the base that they weren't sure if the power lines were dead. The Bayou 69 Black Hawk crew delivered the two people rescued from the capsized boat for immediate medical treatment from the effects of cold water. They returned to rescue four more people stranded in the same area. The first thing I tell, tell everybody is, you know, hey, it's going to be loud. It's going to hook up tight. Give me a big bear hug and hold me all the way up. And they were ready to get out of there, and they are very happy to get up in that aircraft. Thank goodness that we are able to go out there and pick these guys up. I, I don't know how long they could have stayed. That crew was one of the most complex that most people in the medevac career, they will see in their whole careers. Well, the only thing that really compares to it directly was the hoist work and the rescues we did during Katrina. Once it's all over and you start thinking about what actually happened, it, it's real rewarding. Now, one year ago, that Thursday, the March 10th, is when we lost uh, Mojo 69 in that uh, terrible accident in Florida. We, as a facility, were actually postured and ready for a, uh, a flyover of the Mojo 69 Memorial on the same day that we did have the mission. The mission that we did on March 10th um, was much of a recreation of what we do in training. Perhaps uh, we even do some more difficult training scenarios. Our senior pilots are nothing short of gods on the control. Our younger pilots that are coming up are training and are, get, are just will be, will be just as good as they are and our medics are fearless. The most rewarding mission you can do in Army Aviation is doing medevac and saving lives, both in combat and here in the state. And you really know that you've done your job and made a difference that particular day. Chief Warrant Officer 4, Jack Mooka, and Chief Warrant Officer 2, Corey Sayer, piloted the UH-60 as Crew Chief Staff Sergeant Chad McCann lowered Sergeant Aaron Adam down to hoist a total of six people from floodwaters to the safety of a Louisiana National Guard Black Hawk helicopter. 